Hi guys, Olive here, here today to discuss the 2022 Bailey Gifford Prize for Nonfiction and make some predictions about what books may be on the long list. I've been following the Bailey Gifford Prize for some time now. In case you've never heard of it, it is a book prize that awards excellence in nonfiction. It launched in 1999 as the Samuel Johnson Prize, but then it was renamed to the Bailey Gifford Prize in 2015. It's open to authors of all nationalities and pretty much every subgenre of nonfiction is considered. So there's always a good variety of books up for the prize every single year. It's a pretty prestigious prize. They have top notch people working for them. They have their own podcast on which they discuss nonfiction books and topics relating to nonfiction books. And every single year, their panel of judges is highly credentialed. It's the real deal. And it is incredibly fun to follow. I have been following it for a handful of years now. I was even lucky enough to get to work with the prize back in 2019. They sent me the shortlist, which then I talked about here on my channel. I made a guest appearance on that podcast. It was a ton of fun. I'm totally up to doing that again, just to put that out in the universe. The long list for the 2022 Bailey Gifford Prize for Nonfiction is going to be released in just a few days on September 13th, 2022. Then the shortlist comes out in October and the winner is finally declared in November, during Nonfiction November, which is so perfect. So Bailey Gifford season is once again upon us. And my friend Jill over at the Book Bully, who if you're not subscribed to Jill, you are really missing out. She is amazing. She also likes to follow this prize. And she DM'd me and asked me if I would consider making a predictions video for the long list. I've never done a predictions video for a book prize before. So I asked Jill, how would I go about doing that? And she said that these types of videos are much more frequently a wish list, like books we would like to see be selected for the long list. And that totally made sense. That's what I was planning on doing until I started researching for this video. And I started to feel like I wanted to actually make an attempt to figure out what books they're going to put on the long list. Apparently, I'm incapable of doing anything casually, because I have spent hours researching and trying to figure out what books are going to be selected. To be eligible for the 2022 Bailey Gifford Prize, a nonfiction book needs to have been published in English in the UK between November 1st, 2021 and October 31st, 2022. There are some other rules as well. I'll link the website down below if you want to take a look. Looking at the panel of judges for this year, they're different every single year. I was looking at all of the different judges. I was considering all of their backgrounds and it seems like like we may see books on art, science, and politics taking a more front seat than usual. But I expect to see a lot of history books, a lot of books on European affairs. Just based on my experience with the prize, I've noticed that those two types of books are very dominant within the prize. And if you look at books that have been previously nominated, books that have previously won the Bailey Gifford, you'll also see that US-centric books are barely present within the nomination pool. And that makes sense. This is a UK based prize, these books needed to have been published in the UK. But that's not to say that all books nominated for the Bailey Gifford are UK centric. In fact, I have found that a lot of them have an international focus. And most of them have a universally relatable feeling to them. Either the subject matter is something that most of us will have a familiarity with, or these are the types of books that anyone could pick up and feel a connection to. Bailey Gifford books tend to have a more literary tone to their prose. Bailey Gifford books tend to be extremely well-written on top of well-researched and well-organized. But there's also just a look about Bailey Gifford books. I wish I could explain it better than that, but I've been following this prize for so many years now. I can just kind of tell by looking at a book whether or not it feels like a Bailey Gifford book. So as I start talking about the books on my list, you'll see that sometimes I'll choose one book over another to put on my make-believe long list because one book felt more like a Bailey Gifford book. It had that je ne sais quoi. But that's enough preamble. Let me actually talk about the books that I put on my predictions list and my reasoning behind them all. I'll be looking down here at my laptop periodically to consult my list. But to start off, let me just say that I've noticed 
on pretty much every long list, there's at least one, sometimes more than one, book about literature or literary figures. And there were three books that came out within this year's eligibility window that I thought might be contenders. So there's Elliot After the Wasteland by Robert Crawford. Agatha Christie, A Very Elusive Woman by Lucy Worsley, and I Used to Live Here Once, The Haunted Life of Jean Rhys by Miranda Seymour. Now, the Elliot book I was really considering. It looks like a Bailey Gifford book. I could see that being on the long list. But then I saw that it is part two in a two-part biography series. And the Bailey Gifford Prize has definitely nominated books within series before. They actually tend to really like to nominate those types of books. But I've noticed that they really like continuity. So if one part of a series is on a long list or even a short list, they will likely nominate all the rest of them. And they didn't nominate the first book in this biography series. And when I realized that, I counted this one out. But the other two, I could honestly see either one of these making the long list. Granted, Agatha Christie is a more well-known name. And like I said, I think they try to pick books that your average reader could pick up and have some sort of a familiarity with. And more people know who Agatha Christie is than people who know who Jean Reese is. She's the author of Wide Sargasso Sea, in case you didn't know. But... I have a feeling this is one of those times where just one book seems more like a Bailey Gifford book than the other. I'm going to predict that I used to live here once is going to make the long list. It just seems more like a Bailey Gifford prize book to me. Let's stay with the arts for a moment because there is a memoir meets collection of criticism that I can totally see being on the long list. It's called Constructing a Nervous System by Margot Jefferson. This one seems to be more experimental in structure, and it also seems to be the kind of progressive, poised, intellectual type book that I've come to associate with the Bailey Gifford Prize. So I can definitely see this one being on the long list. I'm going to go ahead and predict that it will be on the long list. And I think its chances to be on the long list are especially good because there is a judge this year who has an art background. But let's stick with memoir for one more moment because I think Sins of My Father, A Daughter, A Cult, A Wild Unraveling by Lily Dunn also has a really good chance of being nominated. I've noticed through my years of following the prize and all of the research I've done lately that they normally nominate at least one lesser known, highly personal memoir that will appeal to UK readers. This seems like one of those. It is also a literary memoir, so I think it will have the type of writing that they are going to look for. And also, you may have noticed this, cults have been popping up in books all over the place lately. They're definitely a hot topic being discussed right now. And I've also noticed that the Bailey Gifford Prize likes to keep the books on their long list very topical, very of the moment. They like to be engaged in the cultural conversations that are currently going on. I could definitely see this one being on the long list. I'm also just going to quickly insert my opinion in here. I think including books like this one, lighter fare, books that will appeal to a more general readership, I think it's a good idea. I think it makes the prize more exciting. I think it makes it more accessible. Those types of books serve to balance out some of the big honking history books that are always on the long list, and for good reason, I'm sure. But I think having books that will appeal to people beyond dedicated nonfiction readers like myself, I think it's a good idea. You want to keep people engaged and interested in the prize. And on that note, since since Patrick Radden Keefe won the prize last year for his book Empire of Pain, and because a book about the mystery of the death of Robert Maxwell was on the short list, I feel comfortable saying that I think the Bailey Gifford Prize is starting to take true crime a lot more seriously because two books were on the short list and one of those won. I think that's a very good marketing decision. Certainly, I'm sure they know that including those types of books will draw a lot of attention to the prize. Also, Empire of Pain was absolutely fantastic. But because of that trend, 
I am cautious to call it a trend because that was just one year, but I think it may push forward into this year. I decided to include a work of true crime on my list of predictions. And the one I chose is The Betrayal of Anne Frank, A Cold Case Investigation by Rosemary Sullivan. I chose this one because it has that European focus that Bailey Gifford Prize books tend to have. It's also universally relatable. Who out there hasn't heard the story of Anne Frank? And also, it's just intriguing. Just based on the title and the cover of this book, I want to read it, don't you? Now let's talk about science and nature books. And I was going to predict that The Song of the Cell by Siddhartha Mukherjee would be on the long list. They've nominated him before. It felt like a pretty safe prediction. His books are always fantastic. But then I noticed even though this book comes out in the U.S. before that deadline that the Bailey Gifford Prize gives, it doesn't come out in the U.K. until after that deadline. So it's not eligible this year, but I do think we can expect to see it on the 2023 Bailey Gifford Prize for Nonfiction long list. But there is another really big science book coming out just before that deadline that I do think will get nominated. It's the newest one by David Quammen called Breathless, The Scientific Race to Defeat a Deadly Virus. This is a book about COVID and you can't really get much more universally relatable than that. This pandemic has touched each and every one of us in one way or another. David Quammen is a master at what he does. I've read his books before. They are all incredible. I don't need to read a single page of this to know that it's worth nominating. But when it comes to nature books, there is normally a nature book on every single long list for the Bailey Gifford Prize. That book very rarely wins, but it's normally included in the long list. And normally it's also a book that the Wainwright Prize for Nature Writing, which is a different UK book prize, it's normally one of the books that they have recognized recognized, either on a long list, short list, or sometimes it's even the winner of that prize. But for some reason, I have a feeling that they may leave off nature this year. I hope I'm wrong about that because I love nature books. I think they always should include a nature book, but I just have a sneaking suspicion they might do something else instead. But just in case I'm wrong about that, which I'm very much hoping that I am, I did pick one for this theoretical long list. And that book is The Tree Line, The Last Forest and the Future of Life on Earth by Ben Rollins. I chose this one because because it's about climate change and also apparently it's gorgeously written and also it just has that look about it that feels like a Bailey Gifford book. So I think if any nature books have a shot, it would definitely be this one. But now let's get to the dominant subject that this prize looks at. Like I said before, that's history. There are normally at least a few history books nominated every single year, but I have noticed that they tend to fall into subcategories and this being a UK prize prize, there is normally always one that focuses on British history. And there are three that I saw that I thought might be contenders. Those are Legacy of Violence, A History of the British Empire by Caroline Elkins, Geography is Destiny, Britain and the World, A 10,000-Year History by Ian Morris, and The Last Colony, A Tale of Exile, Justice, and Britain's Colonial Legacy by Philip Sands. This prize definitely isn't afraid to tell it like it is when it comes to British history, which is why I took all three of these very seriously. But out of all three, the one that I think is going to make it onto that long Long list is The Last Colony. I think I chose this one because it's about British history, but then it's also about Britain's colonial legacy in Mauritius. So it's also got that international focus to it. And also just based on that gut feeling I have, which book looks the most like a Bailey Gifford prize book, this one strikes me the most as the type of book that they would select. So that's why it's my prediction. They normally also include some kind of a regional history. And the one that I feel very confident will be included this year is Children of the Night, the strange and epic story of modern Romania by Paul Kenyon. Again, this prize is a very European focus, which is why I looked at this one in the first place. But I feel so confident that it's going to be on the long list because it was written by a BBC correspondent. And we have another BBC correspondent on the panel of judges this year. I think potentially, this judge will be aware of this book because 
because of that connection. But he will also most certainly have an interest in this topic because of the work he does. I'm also predicting that resistance, the underground war against Hitler, 1939 to 1945 by Halle Kuchansky, will also make an appearance on the long list. I chose this one because it's focus on World War II. It's a really big area of interest for a lot of people. It's not one of my interests. I think it's completely overdone in both fiction and nonfiction. And I'd be cool if we could just kind of move on and stick with the books that we already have about it. But that's just me. So I think it'll appear on the long list because it's about World War II and it's by a very distinguished historian. But also I picked this for a very small, very subtle reason. I don't know that anybody but me would notice this since I spent so much time looking into this prize. But the Bailey Gifford Prize loves to include books that have dates in the title or the subtitle. I am pretty positive that there will be at least one book that has dates in the title or subtitle this year. This is just the one that I predicted because it also has that World War II element to it. So those were nine highly educated guesses. I put a lot of thought into those. But the number 10 book on my list of long list predictions is more of a wish list type of book. I don't think it's likely this book will be nominated, but I would love for this book or even a book like this to be nominated. And it's called The Cryptopians, Idealism, Greed, Lies, and the Making of the First Big Cryptocurrency Craze by Laura Shin. As I was researching this video and looking at long lists of previous years in the process, I noticed that business and technology books used to be on the long list all the time. But in more recent years, they're nowhere to be found. And I think they should make a comeback. I think it's great when there is a wide variety of subgenres represented on the Bailey Gifford Prize long list, instead of it being so dominated by one genre like history, for instance, they consider a large number of subgenres of nonfiction. It would be great if we could see that reflected in the long list itself. But that's just a personal wish of mine. So that means that these 10 books are my predictions for the 2022 Bailey Gifford Prize for Nonfiction long list. Again, they're just predictions. I did put a lot of thought into them, so I hope at least some of them proved to be right. But I have no idea what's going to happen come Tuesday the 13th. You'll have to follow along and see. I'm going to put links to everywhere you can find the Bailey Gifford Prize in the description box below, their website, their socials. If you want to keep up with the prize, if you want to see how my predictions turned out come Tuesday, or if you're seeing this video after the fact, you can go compare my list to theirs. It's a ton of fun to follow, so I highly recommend that you come along for the ride with me. Maybe I'll prove to be clairvoyant come Tuesday, or maybe I'll end up with egg on my face. Either way, I can't wait to see. Let me know what books you think are going to make the long list, whether I mention them in this video or not, or if there are any that I did mention today that appealed to you. I would love to hear any or all of that down in the comment section below. All the books that I did mention today will be linked for you in the description box below for your clicking convenience. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, including Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active. In case you'd like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.